Amen. We thank God for who he is. Amen. Thank God for who he is. Turn to Luke chapter 4. This is going to be my supporting scripture, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. We have been dealing with breakthrough. Last week we were talking about a breakthrough and, and deliverance. We're going to continue in that way. We're going to talk about strongholds. Luke chapter 4, 18. And then we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. Our main verse is from 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. That's our main verse, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. And we're going to go to Luke 4 and 18. Amen. Thank God for the youth, the children today. Amen. Thank God for you. Praise God for you. Amen. We got stand up young people. Stand up young people. I always want to acknowledge the youth. Um, Naya, she's from Hamilton. And uh, she wanted to go. She's cousins with uh, Daydream. So Daydream brought her to church with him. Amen. We want to pray for these youth. And uh, this little baby here, uh, the Freeland baby. What's the Freeland baby's name? Alexa. Alexa? Oh, Alexis, okay. Amen. Thank God for you, Alexis. And then we got Kaylin back there. And then we got Gabriella. And uh, she's 10 like you. This is my daughter, Nyla. I was telling Nyla about my 10 year old. She was in fifth grade, too. This is uh, Hannah, my other daughter, David over there, and Simone on the piano. God bless y'all. Let's give the youth a hand. We want to pray for them. Amen. Once you get, you can be seated, young people. Once you get uh, Luke 4 and then 2 Chronicles 10, 2 Corinthians 10, I'm sorry, go ahead and, and stand to your feet. Once you get that, that those verses, Luke 4 and 18. Oh, I'm sorry, I want to hear from Simone. I apologize, I'm moving too fast. Let me get one more song and then we're going to go into the Word. Lift your hands to the Lord today. 
Somebody say, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say it again, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good today. This is why we come to serve the Lord. Amen. You can stand to your feet with Luke chapter 4 and 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Luke 4 and 18. We're just going to read two verses in Luke. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The Lord always has a heart for the downtrodden and the poor. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Verse 19 of Luke 4, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. We're going to go down to turn over to 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. For though we walk in the flesh, this is my main verse. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. I'm going to say a little bit about this. You don't, you're not fighting against a person. You're not fighting against your boss. You're not fighting against the white man. That's what the Bible says. You don't, you don't war after the flesh. But for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. So many times when you argue with somebody or somebody is giving you a hard time and, or they're a temptation to you, it's not that, that person don't always know what they're doing. This is a good teaching right here because I had to learn this. That person don't always know that they're pulling you back, but the enemy is working through them. Whether it's somebody that always gets on your nerves and you be trying to live right and you end up falling out with them and the devil is working through that person. Whether it's somebody that's tempting you, an old boyfriend, old girlfriend, or somebody trying to offer you drugs, you're gonna come out of drugs and alcohol, and the person is, oh, that's the devil working through them. That's what this scripture is talking about. Verse five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself above the knowledge of God, against the knowledge of God. The devil put thoughts in your mind, casting down, the, the, the Lord wants to cast those wicked thoughts out and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Last verse, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You could be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Sister Childs, pray a little bit of that. Sister Child, let's give Sister Child a hand. The Lord allow her to come back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Give me, give me what you're playing. We just want to hear it. Then we're going to preach. That means I got to shorten my message. But go ahead. We're going to worship. <laughs> He has risen. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every
Still to this day, I always liked the history of medieval times. I was always fascinated with the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages is the time period from about 1100, historians say 1100 AD to about 1500 AD. It's the time period of history with serfs and knights and chivalry and fair maidens, etc. and so forth, and all of the mythology that surrounds that. And then in some cartoons like Smurfs, I used to really like the Smurfs. Um, any 80 or 70s or 80s folks that remember the cartoon Smurfs, I mean, y'all remember Smurfs? The thing I like about the Smurfs, it was, it, they situated the Smurfs during the medieval times. And of course, they would introduce mythological characters like dragons and Smurfs and wizards, et cetera, and so forth. And so I always have been fascinated with that time period. In fact, it's one of the things that got me into being a history teacher. Certain time periods like the Middle Ages, it just seemed like a really cool time to live in. They had very large food, they had the big pieces of chicken, it just seems like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Metal plates, goblets, in uh, that time period. And I always was a fan of the author, J.R. Tolkien. J.R. Tolkien wrote The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings, Twin Towers. And he was a Christian author, and he situated his writings during the time of the Middle Ages. And one of the fascinating things about the Middle Ages is castles. And I had an opportunity, y'all, when I went to, well, first of all, the first castle I went to, and my son will like this, is the Loveland Castle. Has anybody ever been to the Loveland Castle? In Loveland, Ohio, there is a castle <laughs> that somebody built. Raise your hand if you know about that, if you're familiar with that. No? Okay, I'm telling you something new then. In Lo you can go see it. It's a tourist attraction. It, it's not an original medieval castle, but he built it in that style. There was a gentleman in the, the early 20th century, it's the history behind it, he decided to build a castle in the same style, the same way that they built castles over in Europe. It took him years and years and years and years, I think decades to build it. And you can go see it today, it's an actual castle. But the real castles are in Europe. And all my life as a history boy, and even when we lived in the hood, I was reading encyclopedias and history books, and you know, I was kind of out of place, a nerd. And I would read encyclopedia entries about the Middle Ages. And one of the things I said earlier was that I've been fascinated by castles. So recently, in about five years ago, I had an opportunity through my university to go to France. And I was, doing some research there and we had students over there. We went to this really, really old town. You see, when things are old in the United States, we're just talking two or three hundred years, but when things are old in Europe, you're talking about two or three, uh, one or two thousand years, you know. And so I was walking through this old town, and I think it was called Cain, C-A-E-N, it was in French, Cain, they say it different, but there was, then in the middle of this town was this big castle. And I about passed out, because all my life, I wanted to see a real castle. 
<laughs> this was an actual castle, Minister Friedman, <laughs> that they had, you know, back in the day, the 1200s, 1300s, they had actual knights and kings and serfs and fair maidens and all that kind of stuff in that castle. So I got the chance to, to, to walk on the drawbridge and everything. One of the things about castles is they used to uh, build walls around the castles. In the, during the time of war, in the Middle Ages, they didn't have helicopters or airplanes to infiltrate. And so in order to infiltrate a castle, you had to physically climb over the wall. And the, the strength of your castle had to do with how strong your walls were. The strength of your stronghold. This particular lesson, we're going to talk about pulling down strongholds based on our text there in 2 Corinthians. The strength of your castle was contingent on how big your stronghold was. A stronghold, think about that word. Strong. Hold. So I'm gonna do it like this. Strong hold. <laughs> Strong hold. That's a good word. Because not only is it strong, cousin Benita, it's not only the strong, but it can hold. It can hold out. Somebody say, Lord, help me to hold out. Amen. Lord, help me to hold out. That's an old James Cleveland song. And he meant no matter what, I want to stay saved. I want to stay in the church. I want to, I want to stay with God no matter what. And that prayer, Lord, help me hold out. No matter what somebody say to me, they can talk about me. They can lie on me. They can mistreat me. They can curse me out. But Lord, let me hold on, hold out. Amen. God is our stronghold. Amen. So in that castle, they would build these thick walls. Sometimes the walls will be like, eight to ten feet thick, you know, uh, where you can walk on them. You can, you can ride a chariot around the walls. So imagine this is a castle. This is the size of a small castle. Imagine if we were being threatened by evil forces, by the Russians. In the video games, the Russians are always the bad guys. Imagine if we were being threatened by the Russians or the Chinese or or except or or the uh, the Saudis or something like that, and uh, they didn't have any air, helicopters or airplanes, so we built a wall all the way around the church. Imagine how difficult it is to to get would be to get in. What would they have to do to get in if they if there's a wall around this this church? What would people have to do to get in? You can say it out loud. What would they need to do if they were trying to get into the church and there was a wall around it? Climb over it. That's what the enemy used to have to do, climb over it. And when they try to climb over it, there would be guys there waiting with bow and arrows. <laughs> they try to climb over it or hatchets and things. So medieval warfare is fascinating. It's brutal, but it's fascinating. That is the idea of a stronghold. The Bible talks about, from a negative standpoint, strongholds in our life. The thing about those walls, saints and friends, they were difficult to tear down. They used to have to get battery rounds. They would have to get uh, cannons to try to blow those walls down. And then, you know, in the Bible, they, in the, the story of Jericho, they didn't have any cannons or anything, but they had the Holy Ghost. They marched around that thing seven times, the enemy's wall, and it failed. You know, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. That was a stronghold. So think about those thick walls as it relates to a stronghold in our life. That's what I wanted to paint that word picture for you. Um, I'm almost out of time. The Bible says, for, the, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We are not fighting people. You're not fighting the, the guy at Walmart with a bad attitude. Nine times out of 10, it's a spirit operating through him. You're not fighting your relatives that are selfish. You know, you got those people that are narcissists, they're selfish. It's always about them. No matter what, they think they're the, the ones going through the worst in the whole world. Their life is the worst. They're the busiest out of every single person in the world, including the United States president. They're so busy. It's all about them. But 
is something operating through that person. A lot of times people that hurt you, the person that keeps hurting you, you're not wrestling against them. You, you wrestling against the spirit inside them. And you have to be discerning of that and pray against that and understand that. Verse four talks about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, pulling down, this is a key verse, pulling down strongholds. Sometimes we can operate, this is, this is really a whole teaching series, I'm just gonna scratch the surface. There are things from your childhood, and y'all know I've been teaching on this quite a bit, most of my teaching career. There are things from your childhood or from a previous relationship that was planted in you, strongholds. And every time, you can't even open up to anybody because somebody hurt you, a seed was planted. You have trouble even accepting help that God is trying to do because there's a stronghold in your life that the Lord needs to break down. You can be saved, sanctified through the Holy Ghost and have a stronghold operate in your life. You really can. And a lot of times it's through childhood, it's through somebody that violated you, or some, some people grew up in a household where they did hardly get any love. They were taught, quote unquote, tough love. Tough love have its place, but it's, it should be implemented every single day. What about regular old soft love where I need a hug? <laughs> I just need you to put a, your, your arm around me and, and say something nice to me. What about regular love like that? But if everybody else was tough love, that, that boy needs some tough love. You know, and, and but those things, maybe still operating in your life. And God wants to, to heal you. God wants to deliver you. Strongholds, the teaching of strongholds, saints, have to do with deliverance and being set free. He wants you to be free. But here's the, here's the, here's the, the challenge. There are people in your life, I don't know who I'm talking to, there are people in your life that don't want you to be free. They want you to be in bondage just like them. And the devil's been using them for a long time to keep you down. But I'm here to tell you today, it's time for your breakthrough. Hallelujah. The Lord has a word for somebody. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Felt that thing. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Satan can use people to keep you in bondage. That's the major problem. There are people in your life surrounding you. They're not saved. They don't want to be saved. They want to keep drinking and carousing and being, being dishonest. Some people enjoy sin. <laughs> I had a hard time when I was out there. I wanted, to, I wanted to get back with the Lord. Amen. But there are people that don't like you when you're saved. When you're doing the right thing, that spirit in them. Get, throws a tantrum. And the, the, the Satan will use people in your life to reinforce that stronghold. When the Holy Ghost starts breaking through your wall, your castle wall, the Holy Ghost can start blasting those walls down. Another person will get the bricks and start repairing. <laughs> I'm getting complicated right now, but <laughs> that, that hater in your life, that narcissist in your life, that person that pulls you down in your life, that loves misery, they will get the, the spiritual brick and mortar out and patch up those bondages in your life. <laughs> Here, smoke this. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm teaching heavy today. I didn't even intend, intend to go here. Pulling, but, but the Bible says the Lord can pull down the strongholds in your life. You just have to let them. And I teach on this all the time. If you are sitting here saying, I don't think it take all that, Pastor Charles. I'm saved, I'm a Christian, that's all I know. You stop yourself from being delivered. If you're sitting up here based on tradition and you've been going to church for a long time, the Lord is not counting how long you've been to church. He, he, he likes that, you know, if you're doing the right thing. Amen, but if I've been going to church 15, 20 years and I'm in the same place, I still got bitterness in my heart, unforgiveness, I'm only gonna let people in so much and I'm gonna cut them off. And I'm gonna be, you know, that neat, that that not so nice, semi nice church person. <laughs> They're nice to an extent, but when you cross that line, you're gonna see that ugly side of them. You think the Lord is pleased with that? No. 
Amen. That could be something in your life that the Lord wants to heal. Look at verse 5. And I'm going to wrap up with this because I'm in overtime. Casting down imaginations. Satan puts, and when I say Satan, I want to be specific. Satan has demonic entities. He has workers. Satan has a force of thousands and thousands. The Bible uses the term legions, millions even, of demonic entities of all kinds that he employs every single day. Doubt, frustration, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness. That must be a big giant stinking devil. Because the devil uses unforgiveness all the time to keep people from being blessed. Demonic spirits of, of we got, seem like newly created devil. I don't know if they created, but they transform. I don't understand that part. But we got like fitting all demons that's trying to kill people. Crystal meth. Demons that come with addiction is what I'm trying to say. Different kinds of addiction. And so a, the, there's a, the enemy will put imaginations in your mind. Unclean, ungodly thoughts. Whether it's through a movie, through a person. You could be sitting right there and Minister Freeland teaches on this. You could be sitting there doing the right thing and here comes some demonic force putting something in your mind. Go get you something to drink. Amen. Go, go cuss you out. Cuss, cuss him out. He, you know, he cut you off. You know, it was your turn in line. That's the imagination. But the, the Bible says this. In every high thing that exalted itself, it says casting down. That's what I'm trying to say. Casting down those imaginations. You know, you need to, the Lord wants to walk, you to walk in holiness and walk in integrity. Holiness is just not, I stop drinking, I stop smoking, I stop, you know, I don't go to the club no more or I'm, I'm clean from drugs. That's, that's amazing. I won't take that from anybody. Hey Amen. I don't want to take that from anybody. There's so many addictive drugs out here. I apply people from the bottom of my heart. But the Lord has delivered from that lifestyle. We want to encourage you. And you got a testimony. But there, that's sins of the flesh. There are sins of the spirit that the Lord wants to deal with us on now. Attitude, like I said, attitude, unforgiveness. And I'm talking to myself. Anger, frustration, bitterness, strife. How can the Lord use you in a people ministry if, if we're always upset and frustrated? And we uh, we walking on eggshells, amen. But I want to see people set. I want to see us set free. I want to see us set free. I want to see the Lord working in your life, amen. I want to see the Lord doing more. There's a song that says, "Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever." He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my life is due Him. He plunged me into victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. There's victory. The Lord wants us to have victory in him. Just like that castle that I saw. You know that castle that I saw in, in Paris, in, uh, outside of Paris in France, was bigger than this church. It was bigger than this church. And the coolest part for me, they had the moat. The moat didn't have any water in it. I wanted them to put some water in it so I could get the real experience. <laughs> They had the moat around it. And the coolest thing was they actually had a drawbridge. The drawbridge stayed down. And you could walk across it. And in that castle, that ancient castle, for thousands of years, people had gone in and out of it. And I imagine somebody trying to take over it or whatever. All of the things you can imagine. And I had an opportunity to, to walk but upon the stronghold. And they had the wall around it. That wall. Many of us have a wall in our life wall around our life and the Lord wants to break it down so he can deal, deal with you and use you. I know it's scary. I know it's scary to let people in, but the Lord wants to do that today. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's all I'm going to do today. Amen. Let's, let's praise the Lord. And now I do want to say a word of prayer. Sister Child is going to bless us with some music and we're going to turn, turn your mind towards just a short closing prayer. Because anytime I come, saints, I have a job to do, and that's point people to Christ, not to me, and to allow the atmosphere for deliverance and progress in the Lord. That's what I try to do. Amen. I don't come to, to beat up on people or to use the pulpit as a place for me to get out my frustrations, but I'm here to lead you to Christ and to, that you can have a closer relationship to the Lord and that the Holy Ghost will fill you.
whole, the Holy Spirit would just fill your whole life. That's what I'm here to do today. That's what I come every day to do till he called me home. You know, I lost three friends this, this week. Three friends. Amen. I lost, uh, we lost sister, Pastor Rita Mack. She was young. She, was, she, she couldn't have been no more than in the early 50s, mid-50s, if that. And then we, we also uh, lost, uh, sister, Brother Ben lost his, his mother. She's a member here. Brother Ben McDonald, he lost his mother. She went to heaven. And then uh, our old mechanic, uh, Wynton Ray, he passed away. In the, like two or three days apart. And so we don't know what tomorrow's going to hold. I'm just doing my part until he calls me home. Hopefully that's 40 years from now. Hopefully, hopefully I got another 40, 45 years. Because I want to see little Madison get into middle age. <laughs> you know, I want to see all my kids and all, all the saints go, you know, do, do, in the, do well in the Lord. I want to see you go where the Lord wants you to, wants you to be. There's some people in the room right now are supposed to be evangelists, supposed to be a minister, supposed to be doing what I'm doing. But the strongholds are holding you back. Your own hangups. Amen. I hold you back. That's personal. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Some people be mad at me, but the Lord told Moses, Moses, they're not rebelling against you. They're rebelling against me. Sometimes they get mad at the preacher. I'm just the messenger. You got to do for the Lord. You need to be where you need to be with the Lord. That's between you and God. It's just my job to tell you. Amen. We're going to sing this song and we're going to pray. Don't hide. And don't you be afraid. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles they? Troubles. They don't last always. Always. Remember. In Jesus. Who will? Wipe your tears away. And when? Just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can win. I know that I can stand. No matter what. No matter what they come. My life is in your hands. Everybody stand to your feet right now. Let's pray. I can make it. Come on and stand. With him. Him I know I can stand. No matter what. No matter what. My life is in your hand. Amen. We're going to lift up a prayer. This is also an opportunity for those that desire prayer. You can come forth. We can lay hands on you and up to do that and pray with you. Amen. Lord, we just thank you today for the, the word of deliverance, the ministry of deliverance that don't come from me. It's not my opinion, but it's your word of deliverance. We thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you will prepare our hearts to receive that healing from you. Sometimes there's a blockage. There's a stronghold that's stopping us from moving forward, from receiving from you. Lord, remove those barriers that come from the enemy in the name of Jesus. Remove those satanic barriers that would stop us. Lord, there are people in our life that have a stronghold on us. And they are a hindrance to us. And it sometimes seems impossible to be separated from those people. But Lord, you fix it. I don't have the solution. But Lord, you fix it. Hallelujah. We want to go forward in the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to move forward in God. But there could be a family member. Could be a close person. God, help us to be able to move forward in you. Remove all obstacles. Hallelujah. If, if you believe that today, somebody ought to be praying that with me. Lord, remove all obstacles in my life. Hallelujah. That person that's holding me back, those demonic forces that's stopping me. 
No weapon formed against me shall prosper today. No weapon, no person, no woman, hallelujah, no job, no substance, hallelujah, formed against me shall prosper, hallelujah. Begin to clap your hands in victory today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I receive it today. Hallelujah. Here I stand, Lord, and me know, Lord, I invite you in my life. Hallelujah. Welcome here. You are welcome.